Okay, this is the exciting video. We're going to start off with importing the WIM file that we created into WDS, into our own group for Home and Pro and so on. And then we're going to use one of those images to actually boot up and create our first live PC. No questions asked from start to finish. Okay, to start with, we've got to be in the Windows Server environment. And we are going to now open Windows Deployment services. On the top left, we'll click on our servers drop down and then we'll click on our server and then we're going to go to install images and select the group that we've created on earlier videos. Now you may notice I've renamed this group. It used to be a day date a nomenclature. I found that to be cumbersome and uh, have gone with something more friendly here. You can rename that at any time you want. Okay, so we have no images here to start with. We're going to right click in this white space right here and install an image. And we're going to browse to the home WIM image that we've created in the previous video. Hit next, 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 and we'll let that do its thing. This takes typically a full minute before you see any progress at all, and it would be reasonable for you to expect this to take 20 minutes to add your WIM file to the Windows Deployment Services. Okay, that process just finished, returned us back to where we are. We now have our images. We have our answer files attached to them. We're ready to create our first Windows machine no questions asked, start to finish. Let's do it. We're going to start by opening up VirtualBox and creating a new PC. We're going to do this whole thing in a virtual environment. We could do it on a hard machine. It would work the very same way, but this allows me to demonstrate it. And I'll call this WinMatter 10 Home, which distinguishes it from these other ones. We'll bump the memory up to 8 gigs. Leave the uh, hard drive at 50. Go into settings. Okay, and let's make these changes. Under system, we'll get rid of floppy. Let's put network as the first boot item because that's what we're going to be doing. And hard drive as the second one because the second boot, that's what we're going to use. Under extended features, we can go ahead and check that first one. We must leave the second one unchecked. Processor, we'll boost that up to a quad core or as much as your host will allow for. Storage, we can leave those defaults. Network, this is important. That must be switched to bridged. And under advanced, we want to make sure that's on the MT desktop. We have had a problem with any one of these actually getting an IP address from the server. Let's make sure USB 3 is checked. And on display, I want to make sure that's on VBOX SVGA. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and OK that. And let's start this puppy up. Now, if you see this, don't panic. This is because we have selected an optical drive as being available in settings, but we didn't attach any media to it, so it prompts you with this reminder. Um, just click the Cancel button, and in subsequent boots, this will be remembered and not asked of you. And once again, we're going to be looking for the F12 boot right there. Now, that went off screen when I did that. I don't know why, but there it is. You see it's contacting the server. The server is definitely picked up at this point, the Windows deployment server. Okay, this screen may look familiar, except the last time we went to a DOS prompt or a command prompt in order to do things. This time, we're ready to install. We're just going to click the Next button. Here we have to enter in the name of our server. And your server name, of course, will be different. 
and the administrator username, which in most cases will simply be administrator, and the administrator password. As long as you got that right, click OK. It gives you your choice to install either one that it found on the server. We'll choose home. The drive space that we've set up in this virtual machine, which is uh, 50. And that should be the last thing we have to do up until the time we're looking at a Windows desktop. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so far, no questions asked. This is the first restart. Now this time we're going to ignore the F12 request so that it'll just bypass that and revert to the hard drive that we put second on the boot list. And we've got our whirling dervish moving right along. Getting ready, starting services. Looking promising. And as advertised, we are in a completely set up Windows 10 environment. We have our own custom background. We have our own icons at the bottom, our own icons on the dashboard. Uh, if we open a browser, We even have our own favorite in their browser environment. So this is completely successful. That's the process. I hope you enjoyed this video series. And uh, I hope you're able to avoid a lot of the pitfalls and frustrations in many days, probably a week and a half of efforts on my part to uh, sift through all of the material and come up with what made sense. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.